Good morning and welcome to Face the Nation. I'm John Dickerson. It was a night for the front runners, with Hillary Clinton finishing ahead of Bernie Sanders in Nevada by six point margin. Donald Trump came up with a big win in South Carolina, where he finished with 33% of the vote. Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz battled it out for second, separated by just 1,000 votes. Jeb Bush finished a distant fourth and ended his campaign. We have four Republican presidential candidates joining us this morning, and we go first to Donald Trump, who joins us from West Palm Beach. Mr. Trump, is it now your nomination to lose? I don't think so. Look, I'm dealing with very, very talented people, smart people, uh, good people. And, you know, I think, you know, they'll be competing. We still have competition. I had a great victory yesterday. South Carolina was amazing. New Hampshire was amazing. You know, the, the, you know, the size of the victories, I think, were incredible. Yesterday, I won every delegate. I won uh, all seven congressional districts on top of uh, having a big margin. So. That was a great victory. But no, we, we're now off to Nevada. I'm going to go to Atlanta tonight. We're making a big speech in front of many thousands of people. And then I go to Nevada, where I'll be for a couple of days. And I have a lot of property out there and a lot of great employees. And I think I should do well in Nevada. But if you didn't get the nomination, you'd be shocked. Well, I wouldn't be shocked. I, you know, look, again, I'm competing against, uh, you know, professional politicians. I'm, you know, senators, uh, top of the line. Uh, I know Ben Carson is still in, and he's a terrific guy and a talented guy. And so I'm competing against a lot of very good people. So, you know, I don't want to say it's mine. I, certainly I'm leading. There's no question about that. But uh, we've got a long way to go. Marco Rubio says that now that the campaign is in this phase, you have to be more specific about your foreign policy vision and knowledge. Well, I think I have great knowledge of uh, foreign policy, frankly. And uh, despite what some people said, I was always against the war in Iraq, and uh, a lot of people weren't. And, you know, they, uh, they just got on that bandwagon recently because it was a disaster. And I think I have great knowledge of, uh, for military, and I think I, I have better vision for Syria than a lot of the so-called great military geniuses that are saying how to fight the war with Syria. Uh, and in my opinion, they're doing just the opposite. They're, I mean, are we going to start World War III over Syria? Are we going to be there for the next 40 years? We've been there for 15 years in the Middle East, and much more than that, probably. And we've spent probably $4 trillion, maybe more than that. And it's time to, to do something about it. And it's time to also knock ISIS out. You've got to knock ISIS out. Let me ask you about that, uh, your position on the Iraq war. You've referred to that a lot. This week, everybody's kind of gone through the things you said. It seems like it was a lot more muted, your opposition to the war. Everybody knows when you, when you say something, it's pretty clear what you mean. On Iraq, it was a little bit more muddled than you've been making it seem. Well, well, John, you have to understand. First of all, I wasn't a politician. I had no, no even thought of being a politician. So nobody even talked to me about the war. Nobody said, should we do the war, should we not? It's not like now, where every day you're being asked questions about things. Uh, and I, I spoke with Howard Stern, who's a friend of mine on his show. And, you know, this was many, many months before. And he was talking about it. I said, yeah, I don't know. You know, I was thinking about it. But I didn't even think about it. And then when the war started, and actually Joe Scarborough, uh, called yesterday and put something out where it basically uh, is on my side. And that was early on, and that was before the fact, and it was very early on. I guess he interviewed me years ago at the very beginning. And that was just put out yesterday evening, and I thank Joe for that. But look, I was against it, and I was against it very early, and it, we shouldn't have been in there. And I think it is probably perhaps the worst mistake we've ever made. First of all, they didn't knock down the World Trade Center, okay? It wasn't Iraq. It was other people. Uh, without mentioning names. It was other people. We, someday they ought to open the report and find out. But it was other people that knocked down the World Trade Center. So it, it's, it's, you know, no reason to go into it big now. But it was a horrible mistake that, unfortunately, we should never have done it. We've lost trillions of dollars, thousands of lives, wounded warriors who I love all over the place. And here's the other part. Iran has taken over Iraq. They've wanted it for decades and decades and decades. They're taking it over there. As you sit there, and as I sit here, they are going in, they're taking over, and they just walk in and they can do whatever they want. They've essentially already taken it over.